Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. Um, let's take a look at um, the precious metals first of all. This is a chart of the uh, the gold futures uh, at the moment. As you can see, we got overbought. We were overbought before a week ago here. Managed to continue to uh, trade higher, even in an overbought condition, just like we did some time prior to that. You see three. Uh, three days in a row three days in a row yesterday we only managed to do one of those candles which probably is setting a, a very powerful precedent going forward stating that perhaps the market wants to go even higher um, we hit resistance here pulled back and now the market is probably mo more than likely just getting out of the overbought condition to power up again and probably do one of these here with this uh, uptrend channel that was established very powerful uptrend channel so that's what I'm anticipating uh, going forward but let's just look at the technicals um, yesterday we closed down about five dollars and ninety cents somewhere around there uh, we had some weak bids going into the close um, the swing VIX remains overbought at fifty I'm sorry not fifty at, uh, at forty uh, you know we hit overbought territory at 39. Um, the market pulse is positive since it's trading above its zero signal line, but the pulse scan did cross below the swing VIX, creating a downtrend channel as of yesterday. This means that negative momentum is entered into the market, so we would expect sideways to lower prices within the next three to five days. And the last signal was an overbought sell 36 periods ago. And since the last swing VIX signal, gold has been unchanged and has ranged from a high of 1631.20 to a low of 1611. Uh, taking a look now at market momentum, currently the trend is very bullish, still under heavy accumulation. Uh, trend strength reading is um, the trend is bullish with bullish momentum. And as far as our trend line retracements, uh, we're currently trading above the post wave cycle uh, trend line retracement of uh, 1402 and 85, or should I say 80. And currently we're trading above the long term trend line support, which is this line, this purple line here. And that price is down around 1408.10. And our intraday price projections we have resistance at 1632.20 and support at 1609.9. Our weekly pulse wave price projections were trading above uh, the pulse wave breakout resistance of 1610.70 and we're trading above the pulse wave breakout support at 1581.10. Our monthly price projections we have a bull market uptrend 12 to 18 month price target of $2,087.80. Taking a look at volatility as far as gold is concerned we did close below the upper band by 20.7% but we expect um, short-term pullback inside the bands is likely but the uptrend should remain intact at this point alright now taking a look at silver as you can see silver is still trading inside of the Kumo cloud of death we managed to spike above it yesterday but we could not close above it so silver is still struggling right now um, we closed down about 67 cents down 1.64 percent yesterday with weak bids going into the close we have an engulfing bearish line and this is where this uh, this red bar okay its real body encompasses the prior bars body as you can see that here it completely contains it okay uh, the engulfing bearish pattern is bearish doing an uptrend which appears to be the case with silver uh, thus this long-term upper channel okay and this signifies that momentum may be shifting from the bulls to the bears now okay this engulfing bearish pattern um, if it occurs during a downtrend which because we were, we've been under you know below the Kuma cloud for so long okay um, it could also signify a last engulfing bottom which indicates a bullish reversal but that's not the case here because we got up into the cloud if this happened we were below the cloud then it would be different we could say this is what's going to happen this this uptrend channel right here okay 
All right, so the test to see if this is the case is if the next bar closes above the bottom of the current bar. So if we get a close below here, then we'll know that we now have a continuation pattern in our, on our hands. Okay, uh, we have a Twinvix reading of 36. Okay, so we're coming off um, a little bit here. Not anywhere near the, oh, no, an overbought scenario because we need to be over 39. The market pulse remains positive because it's trading above the zero signal line and the pulse scan crossed below the swing VIX creating a downtrend channel as of yesterday. This means that negative momentum is entered the market to expect sideways to lower prices within the next three to five days. As far as momentum, as you know, we are still within the cumul cloud of death, the consolidation cloud. Um, a, uh, basically, a close below 35.97 is needed to reestablish the downward trend. However, a close above 41.06 will establish a new upward trend. We do not have a trend strength reading, but as far as trend line retracement, we're currently above the pulse wave cycle trend line support of 33.66, and we're above the long term trend line support of 31.45. Our intraday price projections for Thursday's trading is as follows. We have resistance at 41.53. I do not believe that will be taken out. Support is at 40.04. We are in jeopardy of taking that out. Our weekly pulse wave price projections, we have pulse wave breakout resistance at 40.88. Okay. And pulse wave breakout support at 38.21. As far as volatility, uh, silver did close below the upper band by 22.6%. And I have to say this, silver, we miss you. What happened to the days when you would just rally like it was no tomorrow and you would make us tons of money? We miss these days here, silver. What happened to us? We were so good together. You made us so much money as you were climbing the new highs every day, hitting a new high. You defied logic and reason. When people said you couldn't do it, you, you proved them wrong. We miss you, Silver. Please come back to us. Don't die. Don't die on us, Silver. Please. We meant so much to each other. I thought, I thought we had something going. I thought what we had was, was strong. It was good. But now you're flatlining on us, Silver. Please come back. Don't die on us. We miss you. Look at this. Look at the long-term trend that you gave us. We had such good times together, Silver. <laughs> Moving on. All right, let's take a look at food now since I'm hungry. Uh, let's look at food. Okay, this is a chart of uh, the sugar futures. Uh, as you can see, we're kind of like bumping up against resistance here. All right. Um, basically, uh, prices did close higher than they opened with some strong bids going to the close, but uh, not enough to compel sugar forward. We, we need to um, we need to break out. We, we need to, to get out from here. Uh, word on the street is commercials are coming in and, and, and buying the sugar. So we'll need to see what happens. But right now we have a swing VIX of 34. So we still have a little bit more upside to go before we say we're overbought. Um, we are still remaining in an uptrend channel. As you can see, four trading periods in a row. Uh, as far as momentum is concerned, we remain under heavy accumulation. However, we are range bound now until we can break out or break down. We need to do something. Um, we do have an intraday price projection of 31.49. System will go long at 31.49. We have support at 30.63. That's where we place our stop loss. Uh, the weekly pulse wave price projection top side is 31.33. And pulse wave support is at 28.20. Obviously, the system remains long above 31.33. It will look to actually get short at 28.20. Monthly price projections, all things being equal, if the uptrend can persist, we have a 12 to 18 month price target of 55.30 on the sugar as hyperinflation begins to take hold of the global economies. As for volatility, we close below the upper band by 14.4%. 
So even with a short-term pullback within the bands, we still expect the upturn cycle to continue in the sugar. All right, taking a look at corn. Corn still remains under pressure as we expect sideways to lower prices to continue as we trade below the Kumo cloud here. Very tightening, narrow range cloud, so it should be easy to break out above it if we can get enough pressure there. But right now, uh, the trend remains bearish, so we expect sideways to lower prices to continue uh, as we consolidate. You know, we try to break out, can't try to break out again. Tries to hold it, tries to continue, can't get a continuation. The market is just struggling uh, for whatever reason. We got a lot of technicals here. We closed up about uh, about a cent and a half yesterday, up about uh, 0.22%. Had some strength going into the close, but not a whole lot. We have a hammer, and a hammer has a long lower shadow and closes near the high, as you can see. Okay. Um, Hammers must appear after a significant decline or when prices are oversold to be valid. When this occurs, it usually indicates the formation of a support level and is thus considered a bullish pattern. We also have a hanging man, and a hanging man has a very long lower shadow and a small real body. Uh, this pattern can be bullish or bearish, depending on the trend. If it occurs during an uptrend, which appears to be the case with corn, it is called a hanging man line and signifies a reversal top. If it occurs during a downtrend, it is called a bullish hammer. We also have a lower, a long lower shadow, and this is typically a bullish signal, particularly when it occurs near a low price level at a support level or when the security is oversold. And last, we have a spinning top, and that's a candle with a real small body, and spinning tops identify a session in which there is little price action as defined by the difference between the open and the close during a rally or near new highs, a spinning top can be a sign that prices are losing momentum and the bulls may be in trouble. So our consensus is saying we expect weakness going forward. We have a swing VIX reading here of 16, so we have a lot more upside or downside to go. It can move either way. Uh, we do have a market pulse which is positive because it's trading above the zero signal line and the pulse can cross below the swing VIX, creating a downtrend channel as uh, four periods ago, as you can see hither. All right, as far as momentum, currently the trend is still up, still intact with prices holding above the trend line support at 580 and three quarters. And we're still slightly bearish. As far as trend strength, we have bearish momentum, unfortunately, for those who are looking to get long corn. Um, intraday price projections, we have resistance at 6.93 and three quarters. Um, and we have support at 6.76.20, okay? Basically, uh, the way the system is playing this one today is it's going long at 693 and three quarters and looking to uh, put the stop loss at 676.20. Also looking to take a short position at 676 uh, and a quarter, put in the stop at 693 and three quarters. In other words, you're placing two tickets. See, whatever one gets filled first, you go with that one and keep the other ticket open just in case you get stopped out on the, on the, uh, on the other ticket. So you're just seeing which way it breaks. As far as the weekly pulse waves, we have uh, the breakout at 723 and a half and breakdown at 670 and three quarters. So the system is actually calling for a breakdown and looking to take a short position at 670 and three quarters. And that's all we have for uh, for the for today. Be encouraged. Remember, you can uh, read this and other commentaries on the blog along with uh, any possible entries and exits and stop losses and all that good stuff. And that's at polescan.blogspot.com. Be encouraged and remember, take what you can, give nothing back.